Most mornings he would come over and I would make him breakfast. He would stay like a while. And he'd get a bunch of calls from all of these people. Hello? And he would tell them all he was at my house. They must have thought he was working. But he was never working. He was usually laying on my couch after he ate. He came to my house on this particular morning and he said, I need you to do something. And I said, what? And he said, Pam had an accident. Would you change the bed? Pam was wasting away. You know what people look like when they're dying of cancer. It was very clear she was dying. And I said, of course. I mean, I'm a nurse. And I started asking questions. He said, you don't have to go right now. It's okay. And I said, well, if she's in, if she's in a wet bed, let me go change it. In order to get a bed sore, she can't get out of bed. And he said, she's fine. Make me breakfast. So I made him breakfast. And then as he was eating, I said, why don't I go now? No, he said, you can sit and talk with me. So I thought it wasn't like an urgent thing. I get there, and she had defecated all over herself. And he let her stay in that while he ate breakfast in my house. I felt so upset that he would let her stay that way. And she was out of it. She was really out of it. She wasn't unconscious. Her eyes kept opening, but they were kind of unfocused. And I said, we have to call an ambulance. She's dying. It wasn't the same after that with me, with him. Doesn't care about any of us. It was very clear to me. This bottle is very valuable to me right now because I'm thirsty and there's water in it. But when I'm not thirsty, I can just put it down and walk away. That's how Keith treated us. People are utilities to Keith. That's it. When Nancy's talking about Ranieri coming over and asking her to change Pam's bedding, but he wants her to make breakfast first. That's a demonstration of who he really is. Because what you're actually looking at is a soulless person who says something like, well, let me make me breakfast first. That's a soulless person. You're dealing with what I call dark a AI. You're dealing with the equivalent of, of, of ones and zeros, just no fucking feelings for other people. Just like I want my breakfast. That's, that's super fucked up. And then she comes to the understanding. She uses the bottle metaphor, you know. She talks about how she needs the bottle and then doesn't need the bottle. And this is the metaphor of how he sees the world. And that is very accurate. Honestly, one of the most accurate statements I've ever heard her say. Because that is how he sees people. We're just pawns. We're just objects. We're like nothing. Years ago, I was in, I think I was in Apropos, which is where a lot of trainings happened. And I said to him, I don't understand how you were able to understand the mind of somebody with no conscience so well and their feelings or lack of feelings. And he said, well, let me give you a thought experiment. He loved the thought experiments. And he said, imagine that there are robots outside, AI outside, and they're trying to get in. And would you lie to them to have them go away that, that what they're looking for is not here? And I go, of course I'd lie to them. They're the fucking robots. He goes, exactly. That is how people with no conscience see human beings. And I was always amazed how he could come up with these metaphors. And I was always amazed how he knew the mind of a psychopath so well. It just never occurred to me 
that these were autobiographical discussions.